Hi friends, in this video we will talk about bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates are pyrophosphate analogs. As the name suggests, bis means two and phosphonates are the phosphonate groups so that there are two phosphonate groups linked to each other by a carbon atom. One of the primary function of bisphosphonates is to prevent the loss of bone density and decrease the risk of fractures. So how do they act? As we can recall, there are two main types of bone cells, osteoblasts that stimulate bone formation and osteoclasts that stimulate bone resorption. The primary action of bisphosphonates is to decrease osteoclast mediated bone resorption. How do they do so? They do so by stimulating osteoclast apoptosis resulting in decrease in osteoblast number, finally resulting in decrease in bone resorption. Another mechanism is that they inhibit cholesterol synthetic pathway thereby resulting in decrease in osteoclast function thereby resulting in decrease in bone resorption. Now only the second and the third generation bisphosphonates have the second additional action of inhibiting cholesterol synthetic pathway. Let us now have a look at the classification of bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates are classified into three generations based on the sequence of discovery as well as potency. So we have the first generation bisphosphonates which are the least potent and are rarely used nowadays. Then there are the second generation bisphosphonates which are 10 to 100 times more potent while the third generation bisphosphonates which are up to 10,000 times more potent than the first generation ones. The second and the third generation bisphosphonates are also called amino bisphosphonates because they have a nitrogen atom in their structure. The amino bisphosphonates inhibit cholesterol synthetic pathway by inhibiting the enzyme farnesyl pyrophosphate synthetase. So what are the specific drugs available in this bisphosphonates? Now in the first generation we have atidronate and tilodronate. In the second generation we have alendronate, ibandronate and pamidronate while in the third generation we have risidronate and zolidronate. An important point for their use is that they are either available as oral formulations or as intravenous formulations. So the bisphosphonates encircled by a blue dotted line that is alendronate and ibandronate from the second generation and risidronate from the third generation are used orally. We can remember this by the mnemonic AIR that is alen, iban and risi. These air can be used orally. Now the red dotted line which is ibandronate and pamidronate from the second generation while zolidronate from the third generation are used intravenously. We can remember this by the mnemonic ZIP, ZIP, Zoli, Iban and PEMI which are used intravenously. Now let us have a look at the pharmacokinetics. Oral bisphosphonates are very poorly absorbed from the GIT. The bioavailability is less than 1% and the bioavailability is further decreased with food. So in addition, oral bisphosphonates leads to GI adverse effects such as esophagitis and esophageal irritation. Therefore, the following measures are recommended while taking oral bisphosphonates. Number one, they should be taken on an empty stomach after an overnight fast and at least 30 minutes before breakfast. This prevents a decrease in bioavailability. Number two, they should be taken with a glass full of filtered water and not mineral water. This prevents a decrease in bioavailability and it also decreases GI adverse effects. Number three, the patient should remain upright for at least 30 minutes after taking bisphosphonates. This decreases the incidence of GI adverse effects. Now, the limited amount that gets reabsorbed either accumulate in the bone where it stays for a very long period of time that is months to years or is excreted unchanged by the kidneys. Regarding the adverse effect of bisphosphonates, the most common adverse effects are those of the gastrointestinal system. Apart from GI toxicity which is observed with the oral formulations, the bisphosphonates are generally very well tolerated. The GI adverse effects includes esophagitis, esophageal irritation, heartburn, abdominal pain, diarrhea and as we have discussed earlier, they can be minimized by taking it on an empty stomach 30 minutes before breakfast with a glass of filtered water and not to lie down for 30 minutes after taking the drug. In spite of these measures, if a patient is having significant GI toxicity, it can be prevented by prescribing intravenous bisphosphonates. Another rare complication of using bisphosphonates is the occurrence of osteonecrosis of jaw. It usually occurs when high doses are used for a very long period of time such as in hypercalcemia or bone metastasis. At times, flu-like reactions are observed. They are mostly observed with pamidronate and they may manifest as skin flushing, flu-like system or muscle aches. They are short-lived and do not recur with subsequent therapy. Considering the above, 
the VPNs, bisphosphonates are commonly used in the following conditions. Number one, prevention as well as treatment of postmenopausal or steroid induced osteoporosis, which is one of the most common use of bisphosphonates. They are also used in Paget's disease, which is characterized by dysregulated bone remodeling. By this, it means that in this disease, there is excessive bone breakdown and then subsequently there is disorganized new bone formation. So in this page of disease, bisphosphonates are used frequently with calcitonin and they may induce long lasting remissions. Finally, they are also used in hypercalcemia of malignancy. In this condition, mostly intravenous bisphosphonates are used. Since bisphosphonates take time to act, the initial attack is controlled by furosemide and calcitonin. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found it beneficial, please do like, share and subscribe this among your friends and colleagues.